Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Come into his presence with thanksgiving and bless his name. Can we give the Lord some praise? Can we worship him? Can we magnify him? And can we stand for a word of prayer by Reverend William? Father, we come again before your throne of grace and mercy. We come giving you thanks, Father, for this is the day, God, you've made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, God, for another year, another chance to come and get it right, God. We ask you, God, to look down now from on high and bless us, God. Consecrate this service unto yourself. Bless our pastor, bless musicians, bless our singers, God, bless our ushers. But God, Dwell among us today. And this we ask God in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we welcome you? Welcome to the harvest. We're glad that you're here. Welcome to the harvest. Where the spirit of the Lord dwells. Welcome to the harvest. Where the table is spread. Come on, my brothers and sisters. Give God your heart. Welcome to the harvest. Welcome to the harvest. We're glad. We're glad that you're here. Welcome to the harvest. Welcome to the harvest. Where the spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord dwells. Welcome to the harvest. Welcome to the harvest. Where the table. The table is spread. Come on. Come on, my brothers Oh, give God your heart. History 365, Dr. Durden. Amen. Good morning, saints and friends. Amen. Even online audience and our constituents worldwide. Of course, Chuck Berry. <laughs> Becoming a professional musician, Chuck Berry studied to become a hairdresser, and he also obtained his degree in cosmetology. So we honor you and salute you, Chuck Berry. <laughs> Well, let me ask you a question. What happens when you call on the Lord? Do we step right in? Do we make a way? Do we answer your call? Can, does he do what he say he gonna do? Come on, clap our hands right now. Clap, clap. Go. Every time I call him, he'll step right in. Every time I call him, he'll step right in. Every time I call him, he'll step right in. Every time I call him, he'll step right in. Clap your hands right now. believe it? Can we have a little church today? Hey, I'm going to say it again. Every time I call him, he'll step right in. Every time I call him, he's going to step right in. Hey. Every time I call him, he'll step right in. Every time I call him, he'll step right in. Clap your hands. church in the day. Hey, come on, let's stand again. Every time I call him, he'll step right in. Every time I call him, he'll step right in. Every time I call him, he'll step right in. Every time I call him, he'll step right in. Every time I call him, he'll step right in. Yeah. 
Lord Almighty God, we serve. How many believe God? Our God is great. And he's greatly to be praised. Just before, amen, I share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Somebody requested just a little bit of that first song. I guess it's in their spirit. The little bit of that first song. Amen. I guess someone needs to know that God will step right in. Because you got to believe it. You got to know it. And you got to stand on it. Every time you call him, he'll step right in. Let's go. Hey. Every time I call him, he'll step right in. Every time I call him, he'll step right in. Every time I call him, he'll step right in. Every time I, every time I call him, he'll step right in. Every so much praise team how many believe that every time i call him he'll step right in the senior sanction to say like this he may not come when i want him but he's always on time this is the day that the lord has made we ought to rejoice and be glad therein we so grateful for our streaming audience we're so grateful for the saints that are in the sanctuary Amen. I'm grateful to see another day. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, it's good to be seen. It's good to be in the house of prayer one more time. Amen. We certainly thank God. Amen. For all of you in your respective places, we certainly want to pray for Deacon Blocker. He has not been feeling well. Amen. For the whole week. Amen. But we know by his stripes, Jesus stripes. He's healed. Amen. Deacon Mack is not feeling his best today, but they are streaming and they're tuned in to the service. Him and his um, lovely wife. Roxana is not doing good. Amen. As well, we're praying for her, but her mother wasn't feeling well, but her mother is here. Amen. Amen. And certainly we pray for Jerry Holloman. Amen. One of our founding members. He had a procedure done the other day, but he's out of the hospital and he's back home recovering and all the sick and shut in we're praying for you amen we know healing is real amen amen he's a doctor to the sick amen he's a lawyer to, for us that get in trouble amen he's a way maker he's a bridge over trouble water you you may rest yourself in the very presence of the almighty god we are going to genesis chapter 22 Amen. Genesis chapter 22, Old Testament. Amen. I told you last week, if you can't find Genesis, see me at the church. Amen. It's the first book of the Bible. Am, am I right about it? Amen. Let's give this music department a great hand clap of praise. Amen. They, they was operating in the spirit of excellence, and I certainly... Thank God for that. Amen. Genesis, I want you to go all the way down to chapter 10. I'm going to attempt to put it all in context for you, but for the sake of time, we certainly want to start at 10. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven 
and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, here am I. And he said, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him, for now I know, for now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. Amen. You may be seated in the very presence of the Almighty God. I want to share by way of subject, giving God your best part two. Giving God your best part two. We salute our deacons, officers, members, and friends, and to our preachers. Amen. We certainly thank God that uh, Pastor Martez Whipple Sr. is with us with today, worshiping with us. It's always good to see uh, my son. Amen. Giving God your best part two. Brothers and sisters, we, when we were on the cliff of a new year, December 31st, we declare that this year would be the year of excellence. We agree that God does not like mediocrity. Amen. We know that because it was God that gave us his best. Amen. He gave us the best he had. He gave us Jesus, his only begotten son. And oftentimes we give God what's ever left over. Last week we went by the family of Cain and Abel, and we learn that the spirit of excellence will never produce competition. I'm not in competition with you, and you should not be in competition with me. The only person I'm trying to beat this year is myself. My goal is to be the best Greg I can be, y'all ain't helping me, and give God the best that he deserves. My goal is to become a better man than I was just 30 minutes ago. Not to outdo you, but to outdo myself. Can I get a witness here? It's so sad in many of our churches, we're not learning the scripture, amen, to become edifying. We're learning the scripture to outdo somebody else. So somebody can pat us on our back and say, oh, you sure know the word. But knowing the word and living the word is two different things. I wish I had a praying church. I don't read my Bible to out scripture you. I read my Bible to get this junk up out of me. I read my Bible to get closer to God. I don't read my Bible to get a distance between me and you. I read my Bible for the right reasons. Touch three people and say, check your motive, check your motive. So we've learned Abel, Abel was giving God his best. Abel was giving God his very best. And watch this. When I give God my best, when Abel gave God his best, it had nothing to do with Cain. Okay, help me help somebody. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, when I give God my best, I want you to know it has nothing to do with you. I'm not trying to outshine you, outshout you, out worship you, out preach you, out teach you, out sing you. It has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with God. It, it doesn't. It doesn't produce. Amen, amen, a uh, spirit of competition. It doesn't produce a spirit of conflict. Amen. I'm not going to get angry because you're on your A game. Oh, y'all, y'all quiet. Let me come back over here. I'm, I'm, I'm not mad because you pay your tithes. I'm not mad because you, you fast and I don't want to. Y'all ain't helping me. I'm going to leave you alone and allow you to give God. I'm not going to, I'm not going to cause conflict because you have a conscious, amen, desire to want to be spiritual. And the conflict comes because when you're trying to be spiritual and they still carnal, they can't stand your guts. It shows them up. Are y'all hearing me? But praise God anyway. Well, we might as well get it out the way, say neighbor. If praising God offends you, you're going to be offended the whole hour. Amen. Amen. 
if you don't like me, and if you didn't like me in 2023, you ain't going to stand me in 2024 because I'm giving God my very best. find ourselves in the 22 chapter of Genesis. I like this chapter. This is the chapter where we, amen, see some great things by this man that is called the father of faith. Good to see Deacon Otha. He ain't on the stream. He in the house. Amen. The father of faith. Somebody say the father of faith. And even in this pericope, even in this scope, even in this text, we see that Abraham pursued excellence in his walk. Abraham pursued excellence in his work. Abraham pursued excellence in his worship. That's the goal for 2024. We ought to pursue excellence in our walk. That's your behavior. That's your conduct. We ought to pursue excellence in our work. That's your commitment. Stop giving God any kind of product. You ought to pursue God excellence in your worship. Amen. My worship is for real. Praise is what I do, but my worship is for real. Hebrews eleven seventeen 17 says it this way, by faith, Abraham, when he tried, was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Here in these scriptures, we find something that most of us have never really tried. Y'all ready for it? Here in this chapter, we find, amen, something that most of us haven't even tried yet. Giving God our best. I know I went, I know we get too many claps. We haven't even attempted to give God our best. We're so comfortable with being C students in the body of Christ. But don't, 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 don't say wow because when I was in school, I love C's. Oh, y'all, okay. I'm sorry I didn't make the honor roll. I'm sorry I didn't graduate cum laude. I graduated with some of everybody. Am I right about it? When I got a C, I was happy, but the people around me, my parents and those that were considered, amen, the village, amen, they did not accept the C from me because they saw better in me, and they knew I was just in school, just sliding by. I wasn't giving school my all. And when you don't give God your all, when you don't give it your all, a C is synonymous with dissatisfactory. Y'all mighty quiet. And if C is your goal, Houston, we have a problem. Now, there's nothing wrong with shooting for an A and landing on a C. But don't shoot for a C, you might land on a D. Or oftentimes an F. Can I preach like I feel it? Some of us have never really considered Giving God our best. But that is what God called Abraham to do. Matter of fact, God never will ask you for something he won't do. Y'all missed it. God gave his best Jesus. And now he's asking Abraham for his best Isaac. I, I got to go back to come back up in the last chapter. Amen. Isaac. Amen. Was born, born, and he he was winged. The Bible says, just when he was winged, Abraham threw a party, and in the midst of that party, Sarah, Abraham's wife, uh, saw Ishmael, Hagar's son, uh, Amen, mocking the promise. Y'all ain't helping me. She said, it's time for your baby mama and your child to get up out of here. Y'all 
thing up in me. And Abraham was told by God, listen to your wife. Everything's going to be okay. I promised you something. Amen. His name is Isaac. I know you had another one named Ishmael, but let me put this in your ear. Abraham, they both are your seeds. Don't worry about Ishmael. Ishmael is still a seed of yours, but Isaac is what I wanted you to have. Y'all hear me? So when we get to this chapter, he done lost two boys. One was driven away, and now God is asking Abraham, give me Isaac. Here's the question for everybody in here this morning. Are you willing to go home without your Isaac? There are some things we will not give up for God. And the question is still on the table. Are you willing to go home without that thing you value the most? Will you give it up for God? Or will you lose God trying to keep it? Y'all quiet today. There are too many of us who try to give get by with have love, have forgiveness, have reconciliation, have worship, have giving, have commitment, have. We just so, we, 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 we like to give half, but if somebody try to give us half, we want the whole thing. Ain't no way you can send somebody to Burger King and ask for a Whopper cut in half, amen, off the brawler with cheese and no onions, amen, and they come back with half of a Whopper. You're going to say, hey, hey, where is my other half? We can give half, but we don't like to receive half. Ain't no way you can ask somebody, can I borrow 500 and they give you 250? Hey, man, I told you 500. We can have heartily served God, but when it comes to us, we want all we think we deserve. We want it all plus interest. Can I get a witness? Find ourselves in the 22nd chapter of Genesis, and I learned this this week. Sometimes divine promises, I'm going I'm, I'm to make it mine now. Sometimes divine promises come with difficult processes. Just because God promised it to you don't mean you don't have to deal with the process. Who am I preaching to? Yeah, 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 yeah. God, God promised you, amen, the job. That don't mean the job ain't going to have some difficulties. Y'all mighty quiet. God, God promised you a car, but that don't mean every now and then that alternate ain't going to go out. I wish I had a witness. And just because God promised it, that don't mean you're not going to be exempt from the process. God promised you that relationship, but it seems like it's filled with drama. That don't mean that's not where you're supposed to be. Oh, y'all mighty quiet now. And sometimes God used the process to process. <laughs> sometimes the process is more about processing you than you, amen, feeling that God fell through on his promises. Here is a promise to Abraham that God is asking for. Some of y'all think God is an Indian giver. How are you going to ask me for Isaac when you promised me? Can we, can we get into it? Okay, if you're going to walk in the spirit of excellence, if you're going to learn something from Abraham, this is the first thing you must learn. Faith to obey. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. This is going to be a tough one. The spirit, the, 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 the spirit of excellence will call you to have faith to obey. <laughs> 
See, your obedience is your product of faith. Mm -hmm. You can talk all you want. But if you ain't following the word of God, if you ain't listening to the voice of God, amen, it just talk, amen. Abraham, y'all can see it in verses 1 through 3, he obeyed the voice of God. Here it is, here it is. I know this is a Bible church. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou loveth, whom thou loveth, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Now watch what verse 3 says. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and did what God wanted him to do. Well, I can read the King James Version for you. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clay and clay the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Did y'all hear me? You want the spirit of excellence for 2024? Have faith to obey. Not obey what you like, <laughs> but obey what don't make no kind of sense. God will have you doing some things that to you makes no kind of sense. It's crazy. But that's why you got to have faith because your faith will have you doing some crazy thing. I wish I had a witness in the building. Some of us got crazy faith and we walk by faith and not by sight. I ain't trying to figure it out. I'm trying to walk it out. He said, give me thy only. He called him the only son because this was the son of the covenant. This was the son of a promise. This was the son, not the stuff we do out there and we try to help God. You know, we back with he, he was trying to help God. Yeah, his wife told him, maybe God, you know, we old. This was way before Viagra, y'all. The Bible, go, go, go to chapter 21. It says Abraham was 100 years old when he had Isaac. I, I, I'm giving you a Bible. And so, and so when God speaks something to us that seems impossible, if you keep reading Genesis, they say they laugh at God when he say, y'all will have a son. They laugh. God will say something to you that's just so ridiculous, that's just so, amen, just so like, 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 like in a miracle realm that it will cause you to laugh. My God, you are not serious. My wife old, I'm old. My wife been through menopause 40, 50 years ago, man. See y'all, see I, I don't read the Bible just gloss over stuff. You, you got to see the miracle in this thing. They both old, so ain't no way he was talking about me and you. She told him, you might, she, he might be talking about the maid. Am I, am I in the book? So she told her husband, go be with the maid. We going to help God. Now me and y'all sitting there, there's nowhere in the Bible where Abraham said, no, baby, I don't want to do that. Y'all mean something else. He ain't say, no, baby, I don't think that's what the Lord's saying. He said, okay, baby. Sounds like a plan. But you can't make your own plans when God gave you the plan. Amen. He said, y'all going to have it. Y'all ain't helping me. And they messed up by trying to help God. Here's the teaching point. Stop messing up by trying to help God. If God said it, that settles it. God knows what he's doing. He's telling you to open up your business and you waiting on somebody else. It's your business. Stop trying to find a Hagar to birth your business. Okay, maybe I said it like this. Look at the neighbor and say, God don't need Hagar 
He just needs your obedience. He just needs your faith. He just needs you to believe that he can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or think according to the dunamis power that works on the inside of you. Amen. If you want to operate in the spirit of excellence this year, you've got to have faith that obeys. That's your product of faith. But watch this. Unless I hold you too long, not only do you have to have faith to obey, you got to have faith on display. Faith to obey, that's the product of your faith. Faith to display or faith on display, that's the portrait of your faith. That's the, it's in the text. He got a knife in his hand. He got wood in his hand. He's walking with his son, which means his faith been on display for a while. Because his son say, Daddy, I see the knife. Daddy, I see the wood. Daddy, I, I even see the altar, but Daddy, you missing something. I don't see a lamb. When your children look at you, do you display the portrait of faith? When people are around you, whether you're on the job or in your church, do you display the picture of favor that they know something is missing when you're on your way to worship? Y'all ain't helping the preacher today. Look at somebody and say, you got to have a picture of faith. You should be showing. You show them your anger. You show them when you're mad. But when you going to show people your faith? Abraham obviously had a portrait of faith. He had a picture of faith. He had a legacy of faith. This is why they call him the father of faith. This is the same man. God said, get out from around your own kindred, around your folk, and move away. Where I'm going? Don't worry about where you're going. Just walk in the direction I tell you. Some of us got to have all the answers before we bust one move. Y'all ain't up in me. And God said, every step you take, I'm going to be right there for you because I want you not only to have the product of faith, I want you to have the portrait of faith. Y'all missed it. Okay. 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 Oh, man. I... I shouldn't do this, but verse 5 says, just put verse 5 up. And y'all don't tell the church up when I. It says, and Abraham said unto his young men, abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder, and look now, and worship. But watch what's this. Y'all miss this. And come again to you. I got to teach it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Look at the portrait. He's saying, God is asking me for something. I'm going to give it to God. But I'm coming back with what I'm giving God. Y'all missed it. See, that, that's, that's some faith. Because somewhere in Abraham's mind, he knew that if God asked him for it, watch this, uh, and God promised that this would be the seed that would become many nations, ain't no way God, even if I give him to give Isaac to God, somehow, some another, me and Isaac coming back down off this mountain and going back home because the promise is for real. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Some of you are scared to give up something God going to let you keep anyway. Let me try it again. He's just testing if you're going to give it up. Oh. Okay, let me slow down. Okay, I'm going to slow it down. Notice Abraham told his crew to stay. I'm in the Bible. I'm not cussing y'all. Stay with the ass. We take asses to worship with us. It's in the text. You don't take a donkey to worship. 
All they're going to do is distract you. All they're going to do is talk to you while the preacher preaching. All they're going to do is come on, y'all mighty quiet. Keep the distractions down where the distraction is supposed to be. Me and the lad is going up to worship and we'll be right back. I wish I had somebody to know when you operate in faith, can nothing deter you from giving God what he, what he deserves. Look at, look at your name and say, leave the donkey in the parking lot. Come on, come on, come on, find somebody and say, tie your donkey to the pastor truck. Because when we come into the house of prayer, we ain't coming with our mind. We, don't, we, we come with our mind stayed on him. We come and look into the hills from which come all our help, knowing all our help comes from him. We know that there's a divine promise, but we ain't going to be concerned about the difficult process because God will get you through the process. If he allowed you to go in it, he going to bring you out of it. Who am I preaching to? Shake your neighbor hand. You can sanitize it later. Say, neighbor, I just believe the promise. I'm not going to focus on the process. He was willing to give God his very best. Are you willing this morning to give God your best what do you have to give up? I don't want to get ahead of myself because I'm getting, I'm getting ahead of myself. What is it that you're holding on to that you won't release to be better? What is handicapping you? What is your crutch? What do you think you need that you think you need it more than you need God? He's the air I breathe. What is it you withholding? Because you think it's yours. And everything we have, God gave it to us. I'm going to try it again. The earth is the Lord's. The fullness thereof. And they that dwell therein. Can you touch three people say, it ain't yours anyway. It's God's by ownership, it's yours by stewardship. And if God, if God requires it, amen, you can't, amen, hold back what God requires. God requires our faith. He requires our commitment. He requires our consistency. He requires us to operate in the spirit of excellence. And some of us haven't gotten to that part yet because we're holding back. Notice, notice Abraham then say, hey, man, I got another son out there named Ishmael. Y'all get that on the way home. No. He asked for Isaac. Y'all missed it. If God asks for Isaac, don't try to give God Ishmael. <laughs> okay, y'all not going to like what I'm about to say. Ishmael is your problem, not God's. That's the one you created. And sometimes we want to give, oh, God just gave me something right off the press. Sometimes we want to give God problems we created. God say you wanted it, now you got it. Y'all ain't helping me. But I'm asking for Isaac. I'm asking for your heart. I'm asking for your love. I'm asking for the very thing you love the most. Don't give me Ishmael. You really don't want him. I want what you want. I want something that's going to cost you. See, many of us give out abundance. We really rarely give out a sacrifice. Okay. I got Bible. Jesus was sitting across from a table. He was watching people give. And they were putting big money in the pan. And then an old widow came up 
and put in the offering plate something that didn't equate to a penny. Jesus tapped his disciples and said, y'all saw that? He told him, I tell you the truth, she gave more than the big ballers. Y'all missing it. Y'all missing This is nothing they say. Don't miss this one. This is a good one. Try to stay awake on this one. They was giving what they equate to thousands. and They was making it rain outside the temple. And she walked up and put an offering in that did not even equate to what a penny is today. And Jesus told them she gave more than everybody that gave. Y'all don't want to know why? Because those gave, those that were given, they was given out of abundance, which means, which means they had some more in the bank. <laughs> Boy, I feel like preaching. But she gave everything she had, which means it outvalued what they gave because they could go home and write another check. She had nothing else left. She gave God her own. Y'all right here be worrying about who tied this and who's the top tither. There's no top tither. 10% is 10%. If your top tither is 5000 and mine is $5, we gave the same. Boy, I wish I had that. I, I, I know some pastors like to, you know, pat the ones that give so much money. Uh, yeah, you see, see, that's why y'all don't like me, because you can give a big check, and I'm still going to preach what God tells me to preach. I got to preach it if it hurt my mama. I got to preach it if it hurt me. Y'all ain't helping me. I, I'm not sugarcoating it. How, how, how God told us to be the light of the world, but we sugarcoat in church. Oh, y'all missed it. Let me try it again. How he called us to be the salt of the earth, but we want to sugarcoat everything in the church. Salt and sugar looks the same, but they're not the same. Y'all ain't helping me. She gave her. Somebody shout all. Abraham was about to give his all. Watch this. If you want to have a, 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 a this should be spirit of excellence. You got to have faith to obey. That's the product of faith. Faith on display. That's the portrait of faith. But you got to have faith that pay. That's the price of your faith. Oh, y'all. I didn't get one clap on the price. Watch this. Watch this. You're going to have to give up something if you're following him. Okay, let me let me help y'all clap because y'all most of y'all sleep. If if you're gonna have the spirit of excellence, you gotta have faith to pay. And I ain't talking about no money. I'm talking about a price. We're not willing to pay the price to operate in the spirit of excellence. Abraham after being questioned by this nosy boy. Daddy, I see the knife. Daddy, I see the wood. Daddy, I see the altar. But daddy, where is the lamb? Something ain't right about this, daddy. And that boy still, watch this. Y'all gonna see how it trickled down. This is why some of our children are messed up because we are messed up. The boy had to trust his father like Abraham trusted his father to lie down. Y'all missed it. He actually laid down and trusted his daddy. I took him with a took off running. Boy, daddy done lost his mind. Talking about lay down on the altar. He got a knife. Daddy, what you doing? He never asked his daddy, uh-oh, this helped me right here, what he was doing because obviously he knew what his daddy was doing. His daddy was trusting in God. And this will calm his son nerve. He, when he asks, where is the lamb? He says, son, the Lord will provide. 
Do your children, do your legacy, amen, believe that the Lord will provide? Or did you take their belief because they saw your portrait on display? I don't trust you, daddy, because you don't trust your daddy. Why should I trust you and you don't trust him? How are you telling me to forgive what happened in school? You can't forgive what happened in the house. No, I'm going to say it again. I ain't scared of none of y'all. You telling me to forgive something that happened on the job in school, but you can't even forgive what's happening in this house. It's on display. You telling me to love everybody, but everything come out your mouth. I hate this one. I hate that one. I hate this one, and I hate that one. And I, I can't wait to cut this one and shoot that one. Y'all ain't helping me. You telling me to forgive and forget and, and to be kind. But what's on display is not what you dish. Woo, preach Holy Ghost. He trusted his father because his father trusted the father. You see the text? Verse 10 says, And Abraham stretched forth his hand, took the knife to slay his son. He was committed. He was going to do it. And the angel of the Lord called out of heaven, called his name twice. Abraham, Abraham, stop now. Stop. Stop. He said, Here am I. And he said, Don't you touch or lay a hand on the lad. Neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son from me. Did you ever give God, now I know? Have you ever given God the now I know? Have you ever, amen, encouraged God to say now I know? Did God ever tell you now I know you know me? Now I know you have faith in me. Did God ever have to stop you from giving up something? Y'all don't got quiet on that. Have God ever said, hey, 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 don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I know you trusted me now. Oh, I wish I, I wish the Holy Spirit arrest you this morning that you want to, amen, you want to make God say, now I know. I can trust you now. I can trust you. You, you, you prove to me that you are willing to go home without your eyes. This sermon could have been over. When you get it, I'm going to stop. You are willing to release that very thing you think you need. You think you need. You got faith in that, but you don't have faith in me. And then you get mad with me when the very thing you have faith in crumbles. When it don't work. Don't get mad at me because Ishmael didn't work out for you. Don't get mad at me when you take matters into your own hand. 
I read something the other day. It says when it starts out in anger, it's going to end up in shame. Let me button back up. Cause y'all, if it starts out in anger, you best believe it's going to end up in shame. And I've discovered, I've been doing this 20 plus years, we got some angry Christians. They say they love the Lord, but is it on display? He said twice so he could get Abraham's attention because Abraham was committed. I was watching the dolphin game last night and I saw a white guy with a dolphin hat on with no shirt on. He committed. <laughs> Ain't no way. I'd have been so not committed. Amen. I was so not committed. I was in Miami watching it in my living room. I wasn't going up there. Your commitment should make people around you think you crazy. I wish y'all get it, man. They made pastor crazy. They, they told me I was crazy when I left a job paying six figures. Y'all ain't ever me to come do what God called me to do. They, matter, matter of fact, somebody walked me around this church, this same building, and said, God, pastor, please go get your job back. Please, I just believe you was well like down there, and I believe they'll take you back today if you go get that job back. No, I'm not going to get something back that God told me to leave. I'm not going to obey you. I'm going to obey him. I know what the Lord told me. He told me that's it. Do my work. Don't be worried about that check. City of Miami ain't taking care of you. Elo, Elohim is. Y'all ain't helping me. And sometimes the people around you, that's why you don't tell. I didn't tell nobody what, what God told me. I didn't tell. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't have a meeting and see if they agree with it. Amen. I did what God told me to do, and I told them what God told me to do. They was upset. They was like, how are we going to do this? I ain't asked y'all to take care of me. I know God will take care of me. know his voice. That don't mean everything was easy. Because divine promise still come with difficult pro I ain't T.D. Jakes. I'm G.D. Thompson. I, I, I. Y'all ain't helping me. See, I didn't come here for the income. I came here for the outcome. I don't preach for cash. I preach for change. Y'all ain't getting this thing. Look at somebody say, I'm not in it for the income. I'm in it for the outcome. So, so your faith, you got to have faith to pay. You got to have faith. Your faith is going to come with a price. I had a whole different vision, Minister Washington, for my life. And God said, no. I said, chief of police, he said, no, pastor. They'll tell you, they loved your pastor down there. I could have went as high up as I wanted to go. But it was a sacrifice. I had to sacrifice my personal aspiration. And my personal, if it hit home, and my personal desires to do what God wants me to do. 
when your personal desires and your personal aspirations get in the way of what God is calling you to do, Houston, you'll never pick up a knife to slay that thing that's keep holding you back. Can y'all help me help somebody? Look at your neighbor and say, I got my knife. I got my wood. I got my altar. I'm going to slay that thing I wouldn't give up for God. Oh, I wish I had a way. I'm, I'm going to get, I'm, I'm getting rid of that thing today. I'm, I'm giving it up today. It will not hinder me. It will not handcuff me. It will not hold me back for the, for, 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 for the destiny that God had designed for me. Trust me, people say, get rid of it, get rid of it, get rid of it, get rid of it. Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked. Behold, behind him was a ram caught in the thicket. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering. I can see Isaac saying to his daddy, Daddy, you told me that the Lord will provide. And Daddy, I, I believe you when you said it, but now, Daddy, I believe for myself that the Lord, he will yeah, he will provide. You can sit there like you want to, but I thank God every time my back is against the wall and I'm stuck between the hard place. There's a ram. There's a ram. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I thank God there's a ram in the bush there's a substitute in the bush there's a way out of no way in the bush he opened doors in the bush he opened windows in the bush there's new opportunities in the bush put your arm around your neighbor say neighbor i'm about to speak into your life Say, neighbor, welcome to your season of a ram in the bush. Welcome to your season of Jehovah Jireh. The Lord, he will, he will provide. Say, neighbor, whatever it is, Give it up to God. Whatever holding you back, give it up to God. Whatever you value the most, give it up to God. Whatever stopping you right now from worshiping the Lord, give it up to God. I declare and decree if depression is your God, put it on the altar. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, from this day forward, I will no longer be depressed. From this day forward, I will no longer be dependent. From this day forward, I will no longer entertain suicidal thoughts. From this day forward, I know I'm preaching. From this day forward, I will no longer be discouraged. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will be glad in it. Put your head back. Put your hands up. Open your mouth and give God your praise. Open your mouth and let the devil know my faith is on display. My faith is on display. That's why I obey, and that's why I pay. It's called something. Say, neighbor, 
I don't mean to interrupt your worship. I don't even mean to interrupt your praise. But when you're dealing with God, it's going to cost you something. So let's give him the sacrifice of praise. You don't have to wait till the battle is over. You can shout. You can shout. You can shout right now. This is the day that the Lord has made. Put a praise on it. Put a praise on it. Whatever God wants from you and whatever you want from the Lord, I dare you to put a praise on it. Praise him in advance. Praise him for February and January. Praise him for March and February. Y'all don't hear me. Whatever you need, you can praise him in advance. Excuse me, neighbor. I done lost my mind. Excuse me, neighbor. I got faith that obeys. I got faith on display. I got faith that pays. Whatever you want, God, you got it. Whatever you ask for me, God, you got it. If you need me to pray more, God, you got it. If you need me to pay more, God, you got it. If you need me to love more, God, you got it. If you need me to forgive more, God, you got it. Now, last time, y'all stopped in the middle of worship. We're going to try it one more time. Put your head back. Put your hands up and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Shout unto God like you owe him everything. Shout unto God like you owe him your life. Shout unto God like this is your last day. Shout unto God like he's the best God you ever had. Shout unto God, because if he did it before, he'll do it again. If he got you out before, he'll get you out right now. Shout. Somebody say, neighbor, I've gone through the fire. I've been through the flood. I've been broken into pieces. Seeing lightning flashing from up above. Here's your shout, but through it all. Find somebody and say, through it all, I remember that, that he loved me and he cares and he'll never, I said never, he'll never put more on me than I can bear. Shout out to the Lord. With the voice of triumph, say yeah. Say yeah. Oh, This is a sticker. God said, turn it over to him. Make your name say, put your hands up. This is a sticker. 
Give it to Jesus! Giving God your best. Part two. Everyone standing. You got to give God your best. You're an operating spirit of excellence. You got to have faith that obey. Faith that display. Faith that pay. Faith that obey is the product of your faith. Faith on display is the portrait of your faith. Faith that pay is the price of your faith. We like to say serving God will pay off after a while. But serving God going to demand a payment after a while. Woo! We want to serve God without leaving some things behind. We're not willing to go home without our Isaac. We're going to keep that same personality God is trying to prune out of us. Because we think that's our strength. You know we act the way we act because we think that's our strength. When it's really your weakness. Because if you refuse to give it up for God, it has now become your Achilles heel. I was talking to Pastor Whipple this week. Normally, Pastor Thompson would do one day, maybe two days of a conference. But I said, if I'm going to beat me, I got to do what I haven't done in the past. So I went all three days, Deacon Oakley. Went to all three classes, 6 o'clock. And guess what? I'm better because I pushed. So sometimes you're not, you're not hurting a person that you're not supporting. Sometimes you're hurting yourself. Because pastors need to be preached to, too. Pastors need to be taught, too. If you're too big to get preached to or talked to, then you're too little to lead. Do something different this year, New Harvest. Stretch yourself. One of the things I learned, just that night, and I, and I thought it was something wrong with it, but that's how you got to go. Now, if I can't get my reading in, show y'all something. I got an iPad. If I do that, I ride around here. Instead of being on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. I'm trying to be better. So I could hear it while I'm driving. Instead of listening to foolishness. Y'all, y'all ain't helping me. I learned that in the conference. He said, well, you know, you can put it on audio. I never thought of that. Because we're so, we're so, no, we're so against technology. Some of y'all don't think this about it. I don't want to read the Bible. I, that's you. I'm going to read it. And I got I, I got a thousand books in here. I ain't going to carry all these books around with me. Different versions. Hmm? It's the word of God. If you're here today and you want to be better and you want to operate in the spirit of excellence, and you want to give God your best. Come, I want to pray with you. If you're on the stream, I have three deacons. One of them are here now. 
in service, Deacon Otha Thomas, Deacon John Riley, and Deacon Derek Thomas. I just want to pray with you. I feel, I feel it in this, this room. That's the song. I'm operating in the spirit of excellence. I've been broken. Come on in, come on in, come on in. I'm in you. Pastor, pray with me, pray with me, Pastor. See lightning flashing. I want to obey God. From above. Through But through it all, I remember that he loves me. That he loves me. Come on in, he's still coming. Come on, come on, come on. That he can. That he never. That he never. Put more on me. Put more on me. That I. I, I, I wish the streamers could see this church and how it represents God. Different cultures, different colors. That's God, y'all. Where the love of God is, people will come no matter what background they are from, no matter what nationality. God is the one thing that we all have in common. Can I get a witness in the building? I just love the Harvest International. Amen. What a word from our leader on today. Can we clap it up for him? God is taking this ministry to a whole nother dimension and, and at the end of the day if I cut my skin you cut your skin we all bleed the same color amen we all God's children God we come to you thanking you for this word on today we thank you God knowing God that you will give us strength like you gave Abraham that's why we sing songs like, Father, I stretch my hands to you. No other help I know. That if we would draw ourselves from us, where shall we go? God, we thank you, God, for learning on today the benefits of sacrificing. Not just sacrificing anything, but sacrificing our best. For you sacrifice your son for us. And gave your all to us. And God, I pray, God, as we leave this place, God, that we will walk in the spirit of excellence. And continue to understand that it's not about my neighbor. It's not about my family member. But it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's not my mother. It's not my father. It's not my sister nor my brother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. God, we want to better ourselves so that you get the glory. We want to better ourselves so that lives can change. For you said in your word, let our light shine so that men will see a good work. And so, God, we come against the spirit of depression right now. We come against the spirit of frustration right now. We come against the spirit of irritation right now. God, we pray that this will be a better week as we continue to walk in the spirit of excellence. We pray for the hand that we're holding right now, God. Touch touch my brother right now, God. Touch my sister right now. I don't know what they're going through, but devil, we serve you. Notice that you is a liar. We come against suicide thoughts right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. We plead the blood over our minds right now. We plead the blood over the vehicles right now. We plead the blood over our houses and our churches and our communities in this country, God. God, we thank you for the Harvest Church. All that pastor has poured out, God, pour back into him. God, we thank you for Pastor Gregory Thompson. We thank you for his wife, God. We thank you for their children, God. Continue, God, to give him deep sight revelation. So, God, as he goes higher, we will go higher with him. And, God, it's not about us, but it's about you. 
And as we leave this place, we decree and declare that we're leaving different than how we came. In a spirit of not better, but in a spirit of excellence, it is in Jesus' name. People that love the Lord say amen. amen. Hug somebody and tell them we're walking in excellence. Come on. Hug somebody and courage now. Put more on me. Put more on me. What's up? If you're on the stream and you want to come to Jesus, pray this prayer with me. Father, forgive me of all my sins. Come into my life. Come into my heart. Create in me a clean heart and renew in me the right spirit. I believe you sent Jesus to die for me, but I believe he did not stay dead. He got up with all power in his hand. I'm confessing with my mouth, believing in my heart that he's your son and you raised him from the dead. And I'm willing to be baptized in Yeshua's name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer in the sanctuary or on the stream, you are now in the ark of safety. Amen. I encourage you to find a church that stands on the unadulterated word of God. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise before we... I need to say this before we um, we end our broadcast. The last Tuesday of this month, January 30th, I believe is the date, we're doing baptism. Amen. So if you want to be baptized, we need you to get your name on the list. Um, we have, uh, what our deaconess is, y'all stand up, we need to get your name. Please see her before you leave church today. Uh, Mother Whipple, give her your name and a good phone number. Maurice, you hear me? See, see her right there. Amen. And she'll make sure you get the information for baptism. It's the last Tuesday of this month at Rock of Ages. We don't baptize at this site. We have a site we baptize. We want you to be there at 6 o'clock. Amen. And we're going to do what the Lord called us to do. Last time, I think we had like 10, I believe. And God is going to. Okay. Make sure you see Mother Whipple for baptism. Amen. There's two ordinances the Lord left to the church. Communion and baptism. Your church is open. You're not communing in baptism. Um, check your ticket. Amen. You have to serve communion and you have to baptize. Am I right about it? Listen, thank you so much. Remember the sick and shut in, Deacon Blocker, Deacon Mack, um, Roxana, her mother is here, and um, Jerry Holloman. Remember all the sick and shut in. Amen. And remember to pray. How many know there's power in prayer? Amen. There's power in prayer. Here's a, here are some ways to give if you uh, like Cash App, Zelle, and give the five for our streaming campus. Amen. Cash App is the money sign, New Harvest Church. Zelle is harvest1198 at compass.net and give the five. You'll find that on the New Harvest Church. We have QR codes for your liking. Cash App, Zelle, and give the five. You just put your phone up to one of those codes on the camera and it will take you right amen to the spot where you want to give amen we thank God for technology am I right about it thank you so much for worshiping with the Harvest Church on today our streamers we see you amen we see you and we thank God for you amen worshiping with us today amen I can't say thank you enough to those who take the time and get online, amen. If they can't make it here, amen, they'll tune in from wherever they are, amen. That was one of the benefits of the pandemic. God taught me that you can progress in a pandemic, amen, amen. Let every pandemic, every pain, every trial, every, every tribulation teach you something. It made this church better. It made our platform bigger. But now, because I can't fit a thousand in here, but we can have a thousand, amen, watching and tuning in. Won't God do it? Amen. And so whenever you go through the process, don't let the process discourage you. Let the process encourage you to become greater, to become better, to give God your best, to operate in a spirit of excellence. May God keep you. May God bless you is my prayer. Same bat channel, same bat station, same bat time.